YouTube, it's your girl on a real day E back at you again, and we're just gonna jump straight into this demo of the Zenny twin tub washing machine. Um, I got this off of Amazon, cost about $97 after tax. This is a portable washing machine and spinner that I got basically just for my daughter's clothes very small let me come down so you guys can see it's actually next to my dishwasher which i do not use <laughs> um i guess i'm old school i wash dishes by hand and that's in comparison to the dishwasher so this is it on the inside so it comes with a water inlet hose which goes right here but i'm not going to use it um this can be like hooked up to your faucet or whatever um but i'm not going to use it i'm just going to pour water inside the spinner is much smaller than the washing side i would say about half and it comes with this cover that you put in so it's like push down the clothes obviously to provide pressure so these two can run simultaneously um, it comes with a 15 minute maximum wash timer and a five minute maximum spin timer and this is just um, soft standard and to drain after reading the reviews online I heard that the soft and the standard is basically the same so yeah one little thing i'm gonna assume it's supposed to catch lint but i'm not sure okay guys so we are back and these are the items that i'm gonna be washing today these are just some onesies plain white onesies that i got for my daughter this is a industrial pack of onesies it came with three sizes six to nine months three to six months zero to three months it's from gerber i got it from amazon comes with five of each size so that's 15 in total um i paid 27.99 for this pack which i thought was a great deal however when i just looked on amazon it's now 37.99 then i have same gerber organic cotton onesies but long sleeve and zero to three months which i got from target for about seven dollars or so i'll leave the links for this below also from target is the draft pure gentleness detergent and this is detergent this is the deter this is the detergent that i'll be using for all of her clothes i've already used some of it and um it has no scent which i love and you know it's just a quick easy clean nothing extra this was $15.99 at Target, which is ridiculous because I got a two-pack off of Amazon for the same price. This is pretty cool. I never had one of these. <laughs> so I hope I didn't put too much soap. While it was washing, some of the water got into the spinning side, as you can see. I think I used too much water or too much soap, but while the agitator was going, it was definitely spilling over. So I had to like manually remove some of it so that it would stop doing it. But now I have water and soap in here. Um, I'm going to see if it's going to drain both sides at the same time. So we'll see. I'm going to just... Remove the drainer. Oh, I don't even have it on drain. It's draining by gravity. But it is draining both sides. But there's still soap at the bottom. Ah, oh, that's interesting. It drained the spinner side, not the washer side. So the spinner side drains by gravity. Let me move this cord. Spin aside drains by gravity on its own. Um, I'm gonna switch the knob of the washer to drain. If 
I could turn it. This thing's kind of tough. And now the washer is draining. So you cannot use a lot of soap with this. If you like to use a lot of soap like me, you cannot. And you don't really need to. So yeah, that's that. I love the smell of this dress. It's not really a smell, but I don't know. It's just like a clean smell. I love it. I can't believe I'm about to be a mom. Like, I'm, <laughs> I was doing all of this and I was just like, wow, I feel like such a mom. And then I was like doing, um, doing the dishes, doing the laundry, you know, I felt like a housewife. I like it. <laughs> It's much better than being an ER nurse, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> um, I'm also on, oh, a quick little nurse update. I am on a medical leave of absence from work right now until I give birth. Um, I was working one night, I think this is like two weekends ago. I was working, we were short, listen. Anyone who works in a hospital, working short is just, I mean, New York City is kind of like the norm, but working short in an ER is not fun. <laughs> we were short nurses, we were short tech, we didn't have a clerk, like, it was really bad. And I believe one of the nurses were leaving at 11 o'clock, she does 11-11, so you know and it was really busy it was super busy um i actually didn't get a chance to use the bathroom which i had to do since i clocked in didn't get a chance to take a sip of my water which i also have to because you know like i'm pregnant i have to drink water <laughs> around the clock um let me take a sip of my water now didn't get to drink any water and it was like nine o'clock and my body was so tired my body usually gets that tired around two in the morning so it was like nine o'clock it was only two hours into my shift and my body was so tired i started cramping let me pour this water in here Oh shit, I forgot it's draining. <laughs> Alright, put that back on standard. Let's look this up. <laughs> I drained out all that damn water. I just ran. It was like... Oh, my body was super tired at like 9pm, which is only two hours after my shift starts. And I worked 12 and a half hours, so that's that. Um started to feel a lot of pressure in the lower abdomen started to feel cramps and anyone who knows cramps is basically like mini contractions um and I'm not gonna that's all the water I'm gonna put I'm not gonna say that it was anything that I never felt before, but it was just, I don't know, like the intensity just kept getting worse and worse. So I'm just gonna put this on for three minutes. I'm gonna put it on soft. Let's see if there's a difference between soft and standard. So I'm just gonna put it for three minutes. So a little past three minutes, but not quite. Look at all the soap that's coming back out. I'm glad I rinsed it. You can see. Soap suds. But yeah, back to my little story time. Let me go have a seat in the living room while that goes. Um, I can feel the intensity getting worse and worse. I'm gonna sit in my rocker. Ugh. Intensity was getting worse and worse. Um, so I I wanted to leave. Um. 
the main thing that made me want to leave was the fact that I was super tired. I had all these hours left in my shift to go. It was so busy in the ER. I had I had three ICU patients amongst the other, uh, I don't know, four or yeah, amongst the other four level threes that I had. So it was really busy. I would send a patient up and I'll get another one before I even come back downstairs. Like that's how it was. And um, there was no relief coming at 11 o'clock. Cause usually they'll try to like call people in to come at 11 for OT, nobody was coming. So I knew that there was like, that's just how the night was going to be. Um, and I've, I'm actually used to nights like that, but not wow. I'm eight months pregnant. So my husband was, you know, I work with my husband also. Um, he was there before he clocked out. I, I text him like, I think I'm going to go home. Like. I'm having cramps. I'm feeling a, a lot of pressure. It's really busy. Like, I don't think I'm going to make it to the end of this shift. Um, I also turned my charge nurse. And she was like, okay, just let the supervisor know. I spoke to the supervisor. The supervisor's like, well, if you're going to leave, you have to get triaged, basically. Like, you can't just clock out. I did not want to get triaged. I knew I just needed some rest. I wanted to just go home, put my feet up, and chill. But I was like, okay, let me get triage so I can get out of here. Mind you, I made up my mind to leave at 9. I still didn't get triage till 11. Like, I still had to wrap some things up, get report, you know, all that. So I still didn't even leave till like 11, 11.30. I think I got triaged at like 11.30. Um, and because I'm so far in my pregnancy, they just sent me straight to L&D. I get to L&D and, and um, they like... They get me changed, do blood work. Um, actually, I didn't do blood work, but they drew, you know, if you're a nurse, you know, you draw blood on a patient just in case the doctor orders it. So, did that. Hooked me up to the monitor. The yeah, so I was hooked up to fetal monitoring, and I don't know what the other thing is. What's, if any of my L&D nurses... Um, one monitors, the fetal monitoring monitors the heart rate and then of the baby and then another one monitors contractions so whatever that one is i was definitely having contractions and um once i heard that i kind of went into a panic like i felt like i wasn't a nurse anymore and i was just like a concerned mom to be and um because i was 33 weeks pregnant at the time so um that's not even full term like no i don't want to be having contractions like and I mean, the resident that was there, he kind of was just like, why are you, why are you surprised that you're having, co you know, contractions? Like, that's pretty what, pretty much what cramps are. Not that he was being insensitive, but I don't know. It's just when you change the words, it, something goes off in your mind. Like, I know that cramps are basically like mini contractions because the cramps is the feeling but the action is the contraction of your uterus opening and closing. That's what cramps are. So he was like, but you knew, like, what you knew, you said you were having cramps. I'm like, I know, but I don't know. He was like, it's okay. Like, don't worry. He could, like, he saw it over my face that I, everything just like switched. Everything changed. I was like, damn, I'm having contractions at 33 weeks, um, which is not what I want, especially not because of work, like, because of a check, like, no. Um, so basically, uh, they also collected urine and stuff. I mean, it came down to the fact that I was dehydrated. I didn't get any sip of water and I was on my feet for hours, you know. Um, so I think I signed myself out AMA because... <laughs> I tell myself out AMA because they kept sticking me for IV hydration and I got stuck like three times and they didn't get an IV in. I was just like, yeah, no, I'm going home. I'm going to drink water by mouth and I will um, follow up with my midwife. The next morning, um, I was still having contractions. This is crazy because after he said it, that's when I started to feel it which is really weird. Um, but I mean, I guess I was always feeling it because I was saying I had cramps, obviously you feel cramps. And um, I guess I just started to pay attention like, okay, I'm having a contraction right now. The next morning I was still having contractions. So I called, you know, called my midwife. 
um told me they told me to come in i went in to the hospital that i'm gonna be delivering at i went in and they hooked me up again they basically did the same thing drew blood urine hooked me up i was still having contractions they're like yeah you're definitely having contractions um we're gonna start we're just gonna give you some water drink some water i drank water i was still having contractions um i drank like two liters of water i was still having contractions so they was like yeah we're gonna do some heavy hydration i got lr a liter of lr and that's when the contraction stopped so that's when i knew like okay yeah it, it's a de it was because of dehydration but it's also because i'm i'm doing too much i'm overexerting myself at work and i'm eight months pregnant like so it basically came down to me and my husband making the decision of me not going to work well he kind of made the decision and <laughs> i had to listen to him i did go to work after that i think i did maybe two shifts after that um and it's funny because the last shift that i worked my husband was like yeah this is it because i came on he was already at work he does two to ten i do seven to seven thirty so when i came at seven on a real date so happened to get the section with a full-on cold going on so me being pregnant i said i'm not going to like really jump into this cold but i have to do something um being that it was a change of shift, there were any nurse. I looked at the bedside. That's the first thing I do when I see a cold going on. I look at this. I look to see who's at the bedside. It was all medical students, residents, and doctors. The one nurse who was taking care of that patient was at the Pixis trying to get medication. So I was like, all right, damn, I have to jump in. Jumped in as a recorder. I mean, you know, that's all. I'm, I'm not gonna be doing compressions eight months pregnant. I'm not gonna be. Um, oh, there was also PAs there. So the PA was trying to get access uh resident was getting pa was getting iv access a resident was getting io access um and the cold was going and they were you know doing compressions patients hooked up everything i'm like okay so they kind of have all the those things covered let me record i know the other nurses getting meds um so i was recording everything that was going on you know, asking, letting them know, okay, three minutes of epi has passed. Three minutes since the last epi was given has passed. You know, what do you want to do? Whatever. That, that was what I was doing. And my husband was just there watching me. <laughs> Sometimes if your family was to see what you actually do at work, they would be like, what the fuck? Like, this is what you do every day for 12 and a half hours? Like, yeah. Especially if you're, if you're a bedside nurse in a place like the ER. Um, so he was just there watching, making sure that I was good, basically. Um, and he was just shaking his head. Because even though I was recording, I still was walking back and forth, you know, getting them things like, oh, we need flushes. Oh, we need this. We need that. You know, I'm walking back and forth. I kind of stopped after a while because I noticed that the med students were kind of on it. So I let them take care of that. And um, I just stood at the bedside and recorded. Even while I was at the bedside recording, I had other patients yelling and screaming. I had one patient who was admitted to medicine yelling and screaming, saying he can't breathe. He needs a, a nebulizer treatment. I can't ignore that. And he was actually short of breath. So I was like, before we have another patient coding well he probably he probably would have gone into respiratory distress which would have led to a cold whatever so i was like you know what let me stop recording i had to go get nebulizer treatment albuterol you know duo neb is what i gave him albuterol and ipratropium gave him that and he was okay i went back to recording so my husband is seeing all of this he sees the demand he sees me running back and forth doing multiple things at the same time and he's not with it he was like yeah you're not coming back here so i had to listen to him um thankfully i think i was off for like two days after that shift and i had an appointment the next day i had to go to work so what i did was um i took my paperwork because I, I already had my paperwork ready to go um so i took my paperwork to the doctor to my midwife she filled everything out um i took it to hr that same day and got everything processed she was like we'll notify your department you're on leave of absence so that's what i that's where i'm at now i'm on a medical leave of absence um until i give birth then my maternity leave will kick in once that's done 
six weeks for vaginal birth, eight weeks for C-section. I pray to God I have a vaginal birth. God, you know, my, my mouth to God's ears. Six weeks on a vaginal birth, and then I get 10 weeks of paid family leave. So, that's about four months. Yeah, um, all in all, I like the machine. It's definitely not your standard washer and dryer. A standard washer would have done all of this for you. It would have it would have gotten all the soap out. You could you know it has a rinse cycle, a spin cycle, all of that all in one. So but if you're in my position where you don't have an in unit washer and dryer, then this is very, very much more convenient than going to the laundromat every day. Because babies I mean, I'm just going off of what people say, obviously. <laughs> I don't have any kids yet. Um, they go through laundry really, really often. You change them multiple times a day. So, I could only imagine. Okay, so now I have everything from the washing side to the spinner side. I ended up manually rinsing out the rest of the soap with my hands. Again, really do not put a lot of soap in here because that is what took this much longer than it had it to be. So this is the cover. You just want to make sure you press down. I'm just going to leave the drain down so that as it's going, the water can leave the clothes. I'm going to put the spinner on for five minutes. And there it is and there's all the water coming out. Very minimal soap. Minimal soap coming out, so that's good. These are the two things I was using to pour water into the bucket to rinse the soap out. So yeah, this is gonna get my clothes fairly dry. And um, I'll be back once it's done. Now that the clothes are completely done spinning, um, they're pretty, pretty dry. Like this will probably dry in like a half hour to an hour. Um, it is just the onesie. And then look what came in just now is the onesie. I mean, <laughs> the drying rack just came at the door. I should probably wipe this down before I put her clothes on it but this spinner is amazing um the clothes are really 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 dry so um yeah i think that's the end of this video um i'm just gonna hang these up to dry after i wipe these down after i wipe this down with lysol but yeah that's it hope you guys enjoyed this demo of the portable washer slash my little er story time um i didn't expect to tell you guys about that but you know kind of just flowed so yeah more baby videos more mommy videos to come um keep on watching yeah, yeah. I